Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So, we will continue our discussion with pyrometers, uh, thermal radiation measurement. So far, we have discussed uh, the basic introductory concepts into thermal radiation measurement and about the operating principle uh, such as uh, Planck's law, uh, Wien's displacement law and Stefan's Boltzmann's law. So, in this video, we are going to discuss the basic constructional setup of a pyrometer, the various uh, parts uh, of the radiation pyrometer. So, we know that uh, the pyrometers are basically used for thermal radiation measurement and they are non-contact uh, devices. It means there is no direct physical contact of the equipment with the source of uh, temperature, the source of radiation. Okay? And this whole uh, setup is called as uh, pyrometer and the process is called as pyrometry. So, they, uh, the, the, the thermal radiations, they generally uh, lie in the wavelength region from 0 0.1 to 100 micrometer. So, here when it comes to pyrometers, uh, there are three important things as I have already told you in the previous video in the operating principle video that when it comes to thermal radiation measurement, we are particularly interested in three important things. First is the energy of the radiation, okay? that is the first thing. Next is the wavelength, okay? the wavelength at which the radiation is being or the peak is occurring, the maximum energy radiation is occurring. And the third and the most important thing which is uh, around which the whole discussion is revolving that is temperature, the temperature of the radiation. So, it is the these three parameters that are important when it comes to uh, measurement of thermal radiations. Okay? So, energy, wavelength and temperature. Okay. So, pyrometers they are basically used when uh, the, the source temperature is very high when it comes to the measurement range of the general temperature measurement devices such as radi uh, RTD, thermocouples, thermistor like that and uh, also when the environment is uh, harmful or damaging to the equipments or to the personnel who is in charge of making the measurement. So, in order to uh, ensure that he or she can make the measurement from a safe distance, the concept of pyrometry came into play. Okay, the basic design uh, constructional setup of a pyrometer. So, the first important thing is the source of radiation, the hot body, the temperature of which or the energy of which or the wavelength range of which is to be measured. So, hot body or source of radiation. Next is the focusing element. So, focusing element essentially a lens or a mirror is used to focus or to reflect the radiation, reflect or refract the radiation onto a particular spot. Okay? So, for that this uh, lens or mirror is used. Next, we will use a temperature measurement transducer, temperature detector. So, here we can use RTD, we can use thermocouple, we can use thermopiles, we can use photo detector, but generally thermocouple is used in most of the cases. So, this is the third uh, requirement. Next is a measuring instrument so that we can get the output in terms of voltage or current. Okay? So, voltmeter or ammeter. RTD gives us output in the, in the form of resistance change. So, we can connect it to a voltage divider or Wheatstone bridge setup to convert it into voltage or current which can be measured further with the help of voltmeter or ammeter. But thermocouples, thermopiles, they give output directly in terms of voltage, potential difference. So, in that case, we will only use a uh, voltmeter or we, we can connect a resistor and measure the current flow. 
So, depending on what type of transducer we are using, the signal conditioning circuitry may vary. So, the basic essential thing is that we have to avoid direct contact of uh, the transducer with the source of radiation. See, here the temperature transducers will not make any direct contact. You will see, see the, the figure. The radiation measurement using pyrometer, this is with the help of lengths as the focusing element. Okay. So, here the hot body which is the source of radiation is focused on this lengths which focuses the radiation at one particular spot where a temperature transducer is placed which can be a thermocouple, RTD, thermistor, anything. So, depending on that the temperature detector will give us an output in terms of temperature relating to voltage or resistance change and that is measured with the help of the measuring instrument. Okay. So, if it is thermocouple, then it will give us output reading and directly in terms of voltage. If it is uh, RTD, uh, we can connect a extra signal conditioning circuitry such as voltage divider or Wheatstone bridge, then we will get an output in terms of voltage or current. Similarly, uh, photo detectors, they also vary in different ways, some depend on resistance change, some depend on capacitance change. So, that all varies. So, depending on that signal conditioning circuitry will vary, but mostly thermocouple is used. This is using lens as the focusing element and here we have a mirror as the focusing element where the radiations are reflected onto this spot, the focus, focal point of the mirror where the temperature detector is placed. So, in these two setups, you can notice one thing is that the temperature detector, the transducer, it does not make any direct physical contact with the source, the hot body, the object. Okay? There is indirect contact. It means the radiations are focused onto one point with the help of suitable refracting or reflecting material, lens or mirror. And at that point, the focal point, we are placing the temperature transducer. So, the transducer is not making any direct contact with the source of radiation. So, this is the basic setup of radiation measurement using pyrometers. This is the general constructional setup. And uh, you will find uh, depending on different kinds of measurements, uh, the constructional setup will vary in just slightly. Uh, uh, for example, in some cases, two or three lenses will be used or uh, in some cases, extra signal conditioning circuitry will be used. So, do not get confused. This is the basic, you know, simple way if we try to understand this, this is the general constructional setup. So, there are different ways in which the pyrometers can be classified, okay. The thermal radiations because they lie in the wavelength region from 0 0.1 to 100 micrometer. So, we can convert them into this range, this wavelength range into different zones according to which the pyrometers can be classified. For example, broadband pyrometer are used to measure radiations with wavelength lesser than 20 micrometer. Narrowband pyrometer it is used for measurement of radiations lesser than 1 micrometer and total radiation pyrometer it is used for measurement of thermal radiations which are lesser than 1000 micrometer. So, as I said all the measurements uh, they are related or linked with the three laws Planck's law, Wien's displacement law and Stefan's Boltzmann law. So, I have already discussed about these three laws. So, you can check out the video. So, all of these laws, they generally relate the energy, wavelength and temperature. Planck's law gives uh, the energy radiated per volume, how it is related to wavelength and temperature in this way. Wien's displacement law gives us the relationship between the, the wavelength at which the peak uh, energy intensity occurs and the temperature and Stefan's Boltzmann law gives us a direct relationship between the radiated heat power and temperature. So, when it comes to pyrometers, this is the most important law, Stefan's Boltzmann law. All the instruments are mostly calibrated using this 
mathematical equation because it is linear i mean uh, there is a direct relationship we have the constant of proportionality here the stefan's boltzmann constant and gives a direct relationship between temperature and the the radiant heat power which we are the three important parameters which we are interested in okay energy or power temperature and uh, wavelength when it comes to play we can rely on planck's law and wien's displacement law so this is the basic constructional setup of uh, radiation measurement using pyrometer so when we get the temperature we can put any of these following laws okay to get us the parameter which we want whether it is energy wavelength or any other thing okay so this is uh, the basic constructional setup of radiation pyrometers for uh, you know temperature measurement so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much